Welcome to another episode of the Tobago House of Assembly's Post-Executive Council Media Briefing. This week, the Honorable Chief Secretary of London is the one addressing the media. Let me indicate that I, have, I had promised that I would send a letter to the Prime Minister uh, requesting uh, a resumption of our uh, quarterly meetings, and I did send off that letter. And uh, I'll make copies available to you, but I think the, one of the more important aspects in the correspondence is that I requested the meeting to discuss the process for the granting of internal self-government to Tobago and other issues which can lead to the promotion of harmony in the affairs of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, and of course, that last section is straight from the Tobago House of Assembly Act. Now, one of the reasons why I would have done this is that I, I am concerned at a recent uh, statement made by the Prime Minister where she indicated that the, the bill, the Tobago bill, will lapse. And then to quote her, there's a constitution commission which I think has now overtaken the Tobago bill. The fact that there's a constitution commission has overtaken it. And I, I wish to reiterate that this is a position that has uh, made me quite concerned, especially in a scenario where all of us, including the Prime Minister, must be aware that she is going to be replacing a predictable uh, outcome from a, an outcome that is highly unpredictable. When you have a situation where you you're treating with the reform of an entire constitution, something which takes decades, sometimes generations, and what the Prime Minister is in fact asking us to do is to accept that we should allow a Tobago House of Assembly process which started six, seven years ago, and which even if there were, there were some areas of disagreement uh, shortly before the election, but I think that there was a commitment on both sides that they were uh, supportive of the, the internal self-government for Tobago. And therefore, it's, it strikes me as being disingenuous for us to come to this point where we are actually having it intertwined. So therefore, I have been speaking to that uh, for the past couple of weeks, and I thought that I should place it on the front burner for any meeting that I intend to have with the, with the Prime Minister. A number of the other issues will obviously uh, be on the, on the agenda, and I'm hoping and expecting that the Prime Minister will, of course, uh, do us the favor of having this meeting held as urgently as possible. But I just wish to put on record that as far as I'm concerned, the people of Tobago must recognize that they might have to go into another level of, of, of uh, engagement with respect to the issue of internal self-government. This was one of the major issues during the election, and we, the people of Tobago, cannot allow it to uh, go onto the back burner. It's not fair to us. It's not fair to the efforts that we would have made. It's not fair to the thousands of people who have been engaged in the process. And I think to a certain extent, yes, the ball is in the court of the Prime Minister. But if she does not play it, I think it returns to the court of the people of Tobago, and they will have to ensure that they play it right. I've also written to the Minister of National Security uh, requesting a meeting to discuss a number of issues uh, having to do with national security and the general security in Tobago. And I became very concerned again when the present uh, uh, Assistant Commissioner of Police indicated that violent crime in Tobago was on the increase one. And secondly, that Tobago, which was ninth among the divisions with respect to incidents of crime, had no reason, I don't know if it's risen or, or dropped to seventh. Uh, and this to me was quite disturbing. I think all of us are aware that we in Tobago uh, take a very, very serious view, and we have to, where crime and criminal activities would be concerned. We have to understand that if we are to maintain our image, both for the, for, the, from the perspective of the residents and the visitors, 
uh, crime in Tobago has got to be curtailed. And not only that, the signal has got to be sent that crime in Tobago is very much under control. And when we have a situation where the rest of the country is saying that crime is on the decrease, and in Tobago it is being said that crime is on the increase, this is something that we've got to look at very, very carefully and try to identify what are the reasons and exactly what are the areas in which there has been this violent, in, sorry, this increase in violent crime. Uh, as you might be aware, there was a system in place where the Ministry of National Security met with the Tobago House of Assembly uh, at regular intervals uh, to discuss all issues having to do with national security. Uh, this did not happen under the previous Minister of National Security, but uh, it was encouraging that uh, just before he demitted office, he had agreed to come to Tobago. He was, in fact, he was to come to Tobago, or he was to have this meeting earlier this month. We all know what has happened, and uh, my office would have contacted the office of the Minister of National Security, and we could not uh, have agreement on the meeting being held uh, on that uh, scheduled date. We can't hold it against the minister because obviously he will have to get his house in order. But we believe that the Tobago situation is sufficiently critical, that this meeting should uh, be scheduled as a matter of urgency. And I'll be following up on that. And I'm certain that the, the minister would uh, not be averse to meeting with us uh, sooner rather than later. I want to just indicate that the Integrity Commission, the officers of the Integrity Commission, will be in Tobago on Friday morning, and they'll be meeting with members of the Tobago House of Assembly and other, other persons who fall under the Integrity, um, Integrity Act at the Kokori Hotel, I think it's from 9 in the morning. Uh, all of us are reminded that uh, the deadline for submission to the Integrity Commission, I think this year it's now the 29th instead of the 31st because of the two holidays. So I think the visit of the Integrity Commission comes at a very opportune time. And, and I think the Integrity Commission must be complimented over the past uh, couple of years uh, where they have made an effort to ensure that they reach out to the, the uh, public and to the office holders to make sure that there is uh, limited disconnect between between the commission and the and the public, so that uh, that that is on. I also want to announce that uh, budget D is going to be the twenty fourth of June, uh, and uh, the twenty seventh. That Monday, the twenty fourth of June, will be uh, when the new minister, secretary of finance, would um, present his first budget, and then the 27th there will be, there will be the debate. Uh, the Secretary of Finance has also indicated that there will be consultation with various uh, interest groups and various sectors of the Tobago Society in late May and early June. Among the sectors likely to be the, obviously, the business sector, the Chamber of Commerce, the Tobago Hospitality Institute, the trade unions, the credit unions, young people, the churches, community groups, NGOs, etc. Uh, obviously, we would, he will not be meeting with each group separately, but they'll be put into clusters, and um, hopefully there'll be about five or six sessions. Uh, we, it has also been recommended that there should be an open forum at which uh, members of the public and, and so on can come and air their views. Because, again, uh, you can't please anybody, everybody. But I think that it is a, a good idea to meet with as many different organizations and units as possible and get as wide a cross-section of views as you possibly could. So uh, I want to wish the, the new secretary the best, but I have every confidence that he will not only present a good budget, but be able to guide the finances of the Tobago House of Assembly in a manner that we can continue on uh, our forward thrust. I have been continuing our meetings with the various divisions. Uh, 
I have met with three of the divisions to date. Uh, the purpose of the meetings, of course, is to get a feel as to what is going on in the divisions, how far the divisions have reached with respect to the achievement of the objectives which have been identified. It's all part of a performance appraisal process which runs right through the, the division. Uh, but it also is about ensuring that we do everything to keep our pact with the people. We would have uh, made some commitments to the people of Tobago uh, over the years, and especially during the last election. And we have uh, every, every desire to ensure that those, those commitments are, in fact, honored. And the only way we can do that is to ensure that there is consistent monitoring, evaluation, feedback, response. And this is what we are attempting to do. I must say from my own perspective that the meetings have been very productive, very informative, and I have been very, very um, impressed with the, 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 the insights and the level of enthusiasm and commitment displayed by the public officers. Public officers oftentimes, you know, come in for uh, some degree of criticism, but as I said, uh, based on what I have seen, I'm not saying they're perfect, but based on what I have seen, I think I've seen an acceptable level of commitment and capacity and enthusiasm, and I believe that we have the foundation on which we can continue to build Tobago. Uh, I know that there is still some discomfort in the public domain with respect to the payment of arrears for public officers, daily rated and monthly paid officers. And I know that we have spoken to this already, but I just want to put the facts on the table again and, and share with you some, some documents uh, or some correspondence, I should say, uh, between us and the Ministry of Finance. And I want to just <coughs> maybe preface that by indicating how the process operates. If the Ministry of Finance is aware that there is going to be some uh, adjustments in the salaries of public officers in a particular fiscal year, what they will do is that they'll put a sum. In most cases, a token sum. And that sum is saying, well, okay, hold that. And then when we get the final figure, we'll give you the rest. That has, it has always been like that. In the case of the Tobago House of Assembly, knowing that they were going to get uh, the back pay and you have to pay arrears and you have to have new salary scale and so on, they would have placed in our budget $84,930,580. That is what was placed in the, in the budget and that was allocated to us at the beginning of the year and that has been released. What the administrators and the accounting officers had to do now is to see what was the exact figure that had to be paid out. So they went through the process of identifying the officers, the rates, the new rates, and monies due, and they did a tabulation. And based on that, they would have come to a figure of $236,576,904, and that is for the daily rated workers. And then for the monthly rated workers, including teachers, salaries and COLA, you had a total of $71,171,752. So if you do the arithmetic, you would recognize that we basically need in order to pay both monthly paid and daily rated workers in Tobago somewhere in the vicinity of maybe $220, $225 million. Now we had an option. Do we use the $84 million and pay some of the workers, which would maybe pay 30% of the workers, or do we or do we strive for equity and have a situation where we wait until we receive all the funding and pay all the workers? And I think the sensible decision was made. 
and that is that we should wait until we have all the funding so that we can pay all the workers. Because you would not like to be chief secretary or the secretary of any division if a decision is made to pay 30% of the workers in Tobago their back pay and do not pay the rest. So I think we took what is the only decision that we had, we, we could have taken. In the meantime, letters were written to the Ministry of the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Finance by the Chief Administrator on the 11th of April. Um, both both, both pieces of correspondence treating with the requests for uh, daily rated workers and monthly, monthly paid workers. The information that we got from the Ministry, in fact, the information I got from the Minister is that it is unlikely that this funding will be made available until there is a midterm review. And the midterm review is unlikely to take place and unlikely to the debate and so on and the approvals until somewhere in June. So based on the information which we've got from the Ministry of Finance, it's unlikely that this money will be made available to us in Tobago earlier than late June or earlier Jul early July, and that is the reality. So the reality is that we cannot pay monies which we do not have. And all that we have towards a payment that will be in excess of $300 million is $84 million. And the Tobago House of Assembly has taken the responsible position that it is not fair to use that money to pay some of the workers and not pay others when there is no criterion by which you could say these are more deserving than others to get early payment. And that is the situation, and it applies to daily rated workers in all divisions, including the TREG. So that the decision not to pay anybody until we can pay everybody is a decision that was taken and applies to all daily rated workers in Tobago because we did not see how we could justify discrimination in that particular matter. And finally, uh, you know, I, I may or may not be asked, but let me just make, 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 make a brief statement with respect to the, the vote of no confidence and, and what, what my personal position is. You know, there, there are game changers and they're game deciders. And personally, I think this is a game decider. And it's more than likely that at the end of the exercise, there, there, there's only going to be one man or one woman left standing. Uh, I think that this is a very serious uh, situation. I take no sides. I don't know all the facts. But what I can say is that in one case, if it is 100% wrong, then that is going to present problems for one party. If it is even 10 or 25% right, that will prevent problems for the other party. And therefore, it is an issue in which I know and I believe that we, the people of Tobago, must take an interest. Too many times, we as Tobagonians look on at goings on <laughs> at the national level and tell ourselves, you know, that is them people business. This is our business. And therefore, we have got to look on with interest, with more than interest, with concern, and to draw the relevant conclusions and to make appropriate decisions. Mr. London, staying on the, um, the vote of no confidence, motion, sorry, um, do you think an independent inquiry should be done? Definitely, because as I said, you, you have a situation where you have two uh, vastly divergent uh, stories and uh, commentaries and, and all of that. And therefore, I think that, and that's the point I'm making, that this is so uh, earth-shattering that it has to be resolved. In other words, 
somewhere in the near future, the public of Trinidad and Tobago must have the comfort that they know exactly what has happened, and then they can draw their conclusion. This is not like some of those issues which have come to the fore uh, over the past few years, and even before that, where you're not sure, but you know, it doesn't make too much of a difference. This, 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 is, this is the big one. Were you surprised at all by Dr. Rowley's utterances when he made the various statements and he read the various emails? Were you surprised at all? Did it hit you? Well, of course. Did you I say, mean, wow? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, no, no, it did, it did, you know. Um, I, I don't think wow is a, the word that I, a phrase that I would have used. I don't want to share the phrase that I would have used, but it did, <laughs> it did, it did, um, it did strike me in a particular way. You see in the headlines some um, attacking the government, others saying that Dr. Rowley was reckless and, and, and ludicrous, different, different things, different expressions. Do you think that maybe the presentation was made um, without enough careful examination? Do you think that um, it, was, it was a worthy presentation by Dr. Rowley given the inconsistencies that have been pointed out uh, at different levels? My, my, at this point in time, I do not know. Because I said, you're going to have to judge what happened in the past with what happens in the future. And it is all about, as you quite rightly said, what exactly transpired, what is the position taken by, by Dr. Rowley, how did he come to that position, how responsible that was. All of those things can only be evaluated when we recognize what the truth is. And that is why I'm saying that I, like the rest of the country, will be looking on uh, and really hoping and expecting that processes will be put in place so that we can get as close to the truth as possible. And when the truth is known, I am saying that decisions will have to be made by all of us. That, that, that's the reality. It's not something that one can shy away from. It, it, is, it is out there. And it, it's this, it, this game is not going to end in a draw. Staying on the same issue, is it usual for, for something of this magnitude to get to parliament without the deputy political leaders of the PNM being aware that the political leader is going to make uh, a statement of, 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 that, of that magnitude? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, if you are going to make a statement, you, you make a judgment call. And you make a judgment call in you know, determining who should be brought into the, into the picture at a particular point in time. Because there, there are situations maybe that the deputy political leader might prefer not to know. But um, it is not usual, but, but it, is not, it is not something that has not been done, and it is not something with which I, I disagree, that you have to make judgment calls on, on particular situations, and you've got to be very clear, depending on the sensitivity of the issue, how you're going to treat it. So I really have no problem about not being consulted or informed about this. All right, last question. Um, pertaining to the Charlottesville project, there have been conflicting reports dealing with the EMA approval. Could you confirm whether or not THA actually has received EMA approval for the project, the beachfront project in Charlottesville? Well, I think, you know, interesting enough, I was to ask the Secretary of Infrastructure and Public Utilities to be here. Uh, the, my, my position is at this point that I do not know, I really do not know, because you've got to bear in mind that when you have a project manager, all of these issues about approvals and so on rest with the project manager. I am not aware what the situation is, but I am going to request the, 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 the um, Secretary of Infrastructure and Public Utilities to be here for the next press conference, or I think you all can contact him and he should be in a position, because I'm certain that that is something that he will have made sure that he tried to ascertain. How are you going to demonstrate to the people of Tobago that you are showing inclusiveness? Because I'm hearing you talk about the issue of internal self-government, and I'm hearing you talk about the issue that it's a Tobago issue, 
And I want to remind you that not every Tibigonian supported the PNM, that is, the PNM administration that is in power. So how do you expect to bring all of these people together to really show that the issue of internal self-government is an issue for, for Tobago and not an issue that the PNM is fighting or some would say that the PNM is crying at um, for right now? The point about it is that we've done it before. If you remember the run-up to, to the, the, um, the bill for, for internal self-government, that, that whole process was a process in which the, the PNM and even the PNM administration did not attempt to take it over. All we did was to facilitate the process. And that is why we'd have divorced ourselves from the process, put it in the hands of people whom all of Tobago accepted were not uh, part, politically partisan. We, 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 we allowed them to take control. We did not attempt to interfere and whatsoever came to the people of Tobago came to the people of Tobago totally unvarnished, where we concerned. In fact, even when we sent the, what came from them to Trinidad, we did not change a comma in the Tobago House of Assembly. So what went to cabinet represented the views of the people of Tobago. And it is in that context that we could have felt comfortable that we in, did in effect facilitate a process which allowed Tobagonians to express themselves. I don't think it's difficult to continue doing it at this point in time. And all we got to do is to just start the process. In fact, there are people who are willing to take over the process, and maybe that is how we will have to end up doing it. Let the, let the various interest groups and the non-political groups and so on be in the forefront of this process. Uh, because I don't think it's going to take too much to re-energize Tobagonians into getting involved in this process again. And I don't think that there are very many Tobagonians who see this as a PNM thing. This, this in effect is a Tobago thing and it has been accepted. Thank you for staying with us for the Tobago House of Assembly's post-executive council media briefing for the week ending May 25th, 2013.